Today, we're going to be answering a question from Ombre on Twitter, and they ask, Anyone know of a good paper or any media that spends a significant amount of time discussing the cons and or flaws to popular corpus minimization practices in fuzzing? The answer is no. I don't know of a good paper that talks about corpus minimization, but what I can do is talk about the pros and cons of it myself. We'll attack this problem as if I want to add corpus minimization to a target that I am already fuzzing. First, let's start off with what corpus minimization is. Corpus minimization is the process of reducing the number of inputs that you save against a target that you are fuzzing. This often comes in the form of deleting inputs that do not generate unique new coverage. Another term that you may hear is a min set, or a minimum set of inputs. This typically refers to if you were to take all of the inputs in your corpus, run them through your target, and measure the coverage that they generate. At the end, you only keep the smallest amount of inputs that get you all of the coverage that you are aware of. In reality, corpus minimization can be done against any metric that you want to use, but it's typically minimized against the code coverage that you observe in a target. Now, let's talk about what this means for corpus minimization being an effective strategy on targets. In reality, it may or may not help uh, certain targets that you're fuzzing. It actually might be detrimental to certain targets. And what we'll do is we'll kind of talk about some of the situations where it might be good and it might be bad. Corpus minimization may affect different parts of the same program that you are fuzzing differently. There might be subgraphs that are more prone to being helped by corpus minimization and other parts that may be more hurt by it. Ultimately, what matters is the end result of the sum of its parts and whether or not it actually helps the fuzzer on the entire program. At the root level, corpus minimization is a lossy compression of the input set. While it may seem lossless since you don't lose any coverage, coverage is not the only thing that is part of a program state, and thus you're actually losing some other state when you minimize a corpus. We can think of a super simple example where you index something with a user-controlled index on an array, and this won't actually cause new coverage to occur, but it might actually cause a crash to occur, which is something of interest. Well, that's not exactly the best example because it's a little bit simple and most fuzzers are going to save crashing inputs anyways. Let's imagine a program that loops over each word let's say space delineated in a sentence. And if that sentence ends with the word moose, then the program, I don't know, gets kernel execution or something. In this situation, if the same loop is executed over and over, the iterator of this string space delineated, you're not going to observe any new coverage based on any sentence that you actually pass into this program. There's only weird behavior if it ends with moose. Now we can imagine that we scraped a corpus of sentences from the internet and we have one which is, let's say, hello world, and we have another one which is, that's quite the moose over there. Neither of these will cause the ends with moose condition to be hit, and thus no new coverage will be observed between any of these inputs. Thus, if we were to apply corpus minimization to this, we may end up deleting the input that actually contains the word that we care about, moose, and we might end up with only having the input containing hello world. At this point, the odds that we actually ever corrupt the string or generate something by creating the new word moose is pretty small, like one in trillions or whatever. It technically depends on how you generate your inputs, but it's you're effectively never going to observe it, even though Moose did exist in your corpus at one point in time. Of course, in a simple situation like this, something like compare coverage might pick up on the word Moose and put it in a dictionary. But in reality, there's nothing stopping the word Moose from going into maybe a hashing function that is much harder for something to pick up uh, coverage-guided feedback with. This is actually something I have observed before. I think when I was fuzzing HTTP.sys, which is kind of the core HTTP parser in Microsoft's IIS, uh, ultimately would hash the HTTP verbs, if I'm not mistaken. And it was some custom hashing algorithm that was written only for those verbs. And thus, it didn't matter whether or not you hooked maybe a standard library hashing function as it was hand-rolled. 
Corpus minimization can end up favoring certain inputs due to this. You might have a situation where you end up minimizing your corpus and you reduce it down into something that puts it in a better state. And this leads you to believing that your fuzzer is much better than the one that you had before, even though it might be identical to a poorly performing fuzzer that just got unlucky with the input that it decided to keep during the minimization phase. And this leads to the root level problem with corpus minimization. Effectively, you are reducing the state that you store in your corpus. There's information there that is being deleted or lost. Coverage is really never the cause of bugs. Even though I've seen it in a couple instances where hitting something unconditionally triggers a crash, in most situations, coverage is just something that improves the surface area that you are exploring on a target and thus increases the amount of things that you can react with when you're actually fuzzing a target. Ultimately, most bugs that you find are stateful. They're based on the path or the number of loop iterations or variables that were set up in globals along the way that you executed your, your input. With corpus minimization, you might end up deleting some state or an input that will be very valuable in the future, but you don't know that yet. And by the time you delete it, you'll never end up recreating the state that you actually need to hit an edge case or a bug condition. So is corpus minimization that bad then? Well, the answer of course is, is no, it varies. It kind of depends on the circumstances and the target. Corpus minimization is basically done to increase the performance or more specifically the fuzz case density of a fuzzer. If you have an input corpus that has a thousand inputs that hit the first error case before you even make it to the parser and one input that actually makes it to the parser, you'll end up spending almost all of your CPU time fuzzing something that gets absolutely nowhere. And that is what corpus minimization tries to solve. It tries to cut down on the amount of duplicate entries that you have in your corpus, and thus the amount of time that you maybe end up wasting on one input or another. Corpus minimization is basically a partial solution to something that I call input bloat, where you end up exploring and generating inputs so much that you end up diluting the pool of actually useful inputs in your corpus, and you end up slowly just filling up your corpus with a bunch of kind of useless inputs uh, for future fuzz cases. Corpus minimization solves most of these basic cases and thus is pretty widely used. You'll see most commercial off-the-shelf style fuzzers will do some level of corpus minimization or be bundled with some tool that you can use to do corpus minimization. It's nice because it allows you to have a little bit messier corpus gathering, the way that you scrape or gather that initial corpus, and still kind of get away with having a lot of duplicates or maybe a lot of the same thing repeating in that corpus. It's important to note that some people take corpus minimization quite a bit further. People use corpus minimization to minimize for the fastest inputs that hit certain coverage, or maybe the smallest inputs that hit certain coverage. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of this because this really hyper optimizes to the simplest, most basic state a program is in when you reach that coverage. This can basically lead to you taking the fewest amount of branches and divergences and loop iterations along that path, and it can get a little bit messy. Ultimately, my favorite thing to look at when working on a fuzzer or dealing with these sorts of techniques is effectively fuzz cases per input. This is simply the number of fuzz cases, or iterations as some people call them, divided by the number of inputs in your corpus. This effectively gives you the number of times that you have run each input through your program, and thus the amount of times that you've tried to expand them or turn them into crashing edge cases. This is where fuzzer performance really starts to factor into what techniques you can use in a fuzzer. If you're getting one fuzz case per second and you have a million inputs in your corpus, you can't really do coverage or feedback or anything because you have too many inputs to explore. You will produce inputs faster than you can actually do anything with them. And at that point, you're not really building upon anything. You're just randomly doing stuff, which still works, but you're not really doing coverage guided fuzzing at that point. On the contrary, if you're doing a million fuzz cases per second and your corpus has 10 inputs, it really doesn't matter if you have a lot of bloat in that corpus. Even though you could potentially get a 10x speed up, it's probably not gonna matter too much. 
This leads into something that I like to call the fuzzing catastrophe, which is effectively as a program increases in complexity and state and other variables, it typically becomes a little bit slower to run. And this can lead to weird situations where you have something like Microsoft Word that's millions of lines of code, but you can only get dozens of fuzz cases per second against it, compared to a target that has thousands of lines of code that you can run millions of fuzz cases per second against. Ultimately, a lot of the minimization and fuzzing strategies that you can use depend on how much code you need to explore and how quickly you can explore it. This is why I often compare fuzzers by looking at time to same coverage or time to same number of crashes rather than an overall increase in coverage. I don't really care if a fuzzer gets 5% more coverage over the course of months if another fuzzer may hit all of that coverage minus that 5% in minutes. So what is the solution? Are you supposed to use corpus minimization or are you not supposed to? Well, you're not gonna like this answer, but try it, just try it. Like seriously, it should take no more than maybe 10, 15 minutes to go from not having an implementation of corpus minimization to having an implementation. If you've never done it, it might take a little bit longer than that, but if you have done it once before or you're just comfortable with scripting or writing other languages, you really just need a for loop that goes through each input in your corpus and detects what coverage they have generated and you delete things that don't generate new coverage. It's that simple to add. If it takes you significantly longer than that to hook up, I would highly look into maybe splitting up your fuzzer or putting it into a few more library-like components that make it easier for you to randomly try things like this. Ultimately, that's what makes improving a fuzzer easy, is having an environment where you can play around with variables and play around with things that you read in a paper or saw in a talk, and you can quickly hack them in. Because in reality, when something is as simple as corpus minimization, there's no reason to actually go and read a paper that tells you, well, on these 50 targets, it was generally better, but a couple targets it was worse. It's so simple that you can just go do it. Just figure out if it's good or bad for your specific target, and then go with that. So that leads to, okay, I'm gonna try it out, but what should I do to maybe minimize some of the risks that might come from minimization? And there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, one, which is always the best way, but also the most amount of time to invest, is find a different metric to use other than coverage for minimization. Try to find some state variable in the program that's interesting to track, or some other metric of coverage. And maybe you can use it as a dimension to coverage such that you can have duplicate entries for different states. If that's too complex of a solution, you can also just go with the simple one, which is just keep a non-minimized corpus and a minimized corpus and have a 50-50 chance of picking which one to use. Ultimately, that is the reason why we do fuzzing. The reason why we randomly jam things into a program is because we don't know what will generate a crash. In the same way, you can use that as a meta thing when you are fuzzing programs and you can do that for your strategies as well. If you don't know what fuzzing strategy to apply, randomly pick one. It's now just part of the fuzzing strategy to randomly pick a strategy. If you track the results of your fuzzer, then maybe in post you can find out that certain strategies are useless and certain ones are valuable and you can kind of adjust those weights after the fact as a human. But yeah, that's about it. Ultimately, when you're writing a fuzzer, leverage the fact that randomness is what the fuzzer is doing. So if you don't know what to do, do multiple things. It's totally fine. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I have no idea what this is gonna look like when edited. I kind of just did, I have like a little script here that I'm kind of referencing and I did a bunch of takes and now I cross my fingers that it doesn't look too robotic when I edit this all together when I didn't move the camera so it's the same angle and it's gonna look kind of weird and jump cutty. But I don't know, I'm, I'm Trying things out, we'll uh, maybe figure out some artistic direction as we do more stuff. But thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.